right, hello Riverside. This is Nathan Freeman with the City of Riverside's Community and Economic Development Department. This interview is part of a continuing video series dedicated to helping Riverside small businesses navigate their way through the COVID-19 pandemic by providing pertinent information and resources directly from subject matter experts. I'm joined today by my colleague, Edie Jimenez, with the city's Community and Economic Development Department and our special guests, Carmen Lainez and Joe Ramos. Carmen is the chair of the Greater Riverside Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Joe is the chamber's executive director. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Nathan. Like you said, uh, my name is Joe Ramos. I'm the executive director with the chamber here. Um, I've been on board with the chamber for about a year and a half now. So it's been an interesting year uh, with, with COVID and everything that's going on. It's been a, a, a definitely an interesting past year. Um, prior to coming to the chamber, I actually came from a very different background. Um, I spent about a decade in the casino and gaming industry. Um, so it's a little bit different than, than the nonprofit world, but I had a chance to make a change in my career and I decided that I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, nonprofit has always interested me, so I told myself, you know, this might be a good fit, a good opportunity. And you know, so I took that chance to come on board and I'm really glad that I did. It's really great to see the outreach and the resources that we're able to give the community through the chamber. All right, Carmen, how about yourself? Of course, um, my background is I immigrated from Nicaragua when I was five years old. Um, I grew up in LA County. I went to undergrad at UC San Diego, majored in poli sci with a minor in law and society. I went to um, law school, graduated in 2009, and um, I've been an attorney now for 10 years. I'm actually active in the Riverside area. I'm a corporate and immigration attorney. Um, growing up, I always saw a need for our community, our small businesses, our you know younger generation, um, and that's what led me to the chamber, because the chamber not only smell uh, or helps small businesses, but also helps um, kids and just the community in general know about resources that are available to them. All right, Joe, can you tell us a, a little bit more about the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce? How long has it been around? Where are you guys located? Um, we're located in downtown Riverside. Last year was actually our 40th year. Um, we had our 40th year celebration. That was a big you know, milestone for us with the chamber. Um, you know, We're located right in the heart of downtown Riverside, so right in the center of, of the business community. So it gives us a good situation, a good setup to be able to have access to businesses and for them to have access to us. Um, you know, unfortunately right now with COVID, we're not having the kind of walk through traffic that we used to, but you know, moving forward, we do plan on opening that up again and being an uh, in-person resource as well to you know, the local business community around us. So Carmen and Joe, what are some of the biggest uh, or most common concerns you're hearing from business owners during this COVID-19 pandemic? So currently, um, as speaking to our membership, obviously COVID has hit everybody pretty hard, especially small businesses in the community. One of the biggest things has been funding and making sure that they can stay afloat um, with all these changes when the businesses are able to open and then they have to close down again. Funding is an extremely important thing, um, along with resources and being able to obtain those resources. Um, so having the information and the education of those resources. Great. Joe, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I completely agree with Carmen. I think one of the main things right now is there's a lot of resources out there, but sometimes this information is coming at you so quickly and it's changing so quickly that we as a chamber really try to make sure that we break it down for our business owners and make them aware of what they qualify for, what's available, what's out there, and break it down into to a simple terms, you know, because uh, sometimes I think that's one of the things that um, business owners sometimes get a little bit they shy away from, you know, because it can be overwhelming. You're dealing with COVID, you're dealing with trying just to keep your doors open and, and getting your funding in there, but sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming. We really try to make that information streamlined for them and let them know what's available. Some of the stories I'm hearing from our business community uh, are that folks are doing just about anything uh, to survive right now. So the businesses that, that you guys are talking to, how are they handling this pandemic? What are they doing to survive? Uh, have they taken advantage of the, the funding opportunities you mentioned, like the PPP? Uh, could you guys give us some success stories? Yes, definitely. Um, I think that a lot of our business owners have had to pivot and kind of change the way that they're doing business, um, change maybe the way that they um, are, are not able to see people face-to-face. -face. Um, definitely a lot of our membership has taken um, 
the opportunity to apply for not only the PPP loan, but the EIDL loan as well. SBA has done a very good job of making sure that those resources are out there. Um, for the Chamber, we do a webinar every Wednesday, Cafecito Wednesdays. During those times, we have been helping our business owners um, just kind of go step by step, making sure that they have all the proper documentation, making sure that they're preparing to ask for the forgiveness of it. Uh, we have one of our business owners that was on our a membership hot, uh, spotlight. Um, so Jay, Jay does nails for a living and obviously as we know they were able to open up shop again for very shortly and then close down. So what she did is at her place of business she became a distributor. So from my understanding Los Angeles has a lot of like the nail supplies distribution. So she brought something to Riverside since she couldn't open her salon and she's actually making the nails herself custom made at her location and then mailing it out to customers. Um, so that was actually she's 22, 23 years old. She's an entrepreneur. She was able to pivot and make sure that she kept her business alive one way or another. Um, that was one of our big success stories. Uh, we also have another member, Tuition Bites. Uh, so Tuition Bites, uh, the owner, Hector, and his wife, he works for Microsoft. They do a lot of community service, but they also have some um, locations here in Riverside. They just recently opened up by UCR. Um, because they weren't able to open up shop for a long time, what they did is for their catering service, they did taco boxes. So it was a box with like beans and rice, three tacos. And instead of catering events, because they weren't able to do so, they would deliver the boxes, which I thought was a brilliant way to do something um, and continue running their business. Okay, thanks, Carmen. Uh, Joe, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, honestly, one of my favorite success stories, and it's it's really close to us, the chamber, because she was a former board member, um, Skin Spa Riverside, Rena Garrett, uh, you know, great friend of ours. And again, you know, when you're dealing in the spa industry, you and, and you're, you're dealing with COVID, you literally have to shut everything down. You can't have people coming through. You can't be having that face-to-face, -face, you know, interaction. So what she did was she took advantage of technology. You know, like Carmen said, she pivoted her business. And instead of doing those one-on-one -on -one skin consultations, she started doing them via Zoom. She started doing them via, you know, web platform. So she's able to still build those connections and provide services and provide consultation um, and, and find a creative workaround, find a way to help her business survive. She was able to promote her products that way. And in the meantime, well, you know, once hopefully COVID, you know, starts to uh, not be a, such a big impact, things start to reopen. Now she has all these new business relations that she's already built from her home office and to be able to capitalize on that and grow her business. So she's still growing despite being physically um, shut down right now. So, you know, I love the fact that she was able to take a horrible situation, but kind of find that niche and, and use technology to her benefit to be able to expand her reach. That's great, very inspiring. Okay, I, I see that Edie is back with us. Edie, why don't you uh, ask the next question, okay? Uh, what resources can the Hispanic Chamber provide to Riverside businesses community, and how is the chamber advocating for businesses on the local, state, and federal level? All right, Carmen, if you would like to give us your your answer. Thank you, Edie, for that for that question. Um, so currently, the chamber has two business training programs: Business Without Boundaries, which is a ten week program, and Emprendedores, which is an eight week program. Um, our Business Without Boundaries is in English, and Emprendedores is solely in Spanish. It is for entrepreneurs, small business owners, um, even business owners that have been in business for a few years. We've incorporated different classes this year to incorporate technology using um, social media more as a platform, using web based, using Zoom based, um, because this is a lot of things that because of COVID we've had to change. Uh, a lot of business owners are not used to uh, conducting business solely online, maybe on the retail side or maybe their uh, meetings being able to outreach to more people um, through social media as well. So marketing is an important tool. Um, as far as the state and federal level, we're also part of the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which represents all the chambers in California who are in conversation with the federal government. They keep us abreast of all new legislation, any new resources, grants that small business owners can apply for. Um, and that's what we're doing currently right now for our community and our, our business owners. Um, and I just like to add that the classes are completely free. Um, so we really like to encourage as many business owners, even if they're not Latino, uh, people have the misconception that because we're the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, it's not you know, inclusive, but it's inclusive to everybody. Um, and we want everybody in our community to be able to thrive and use the resources from these classes to uh, continue doing their business or starting their own business. 
All right, that's, that's great. great. That's great. Yes. Joe, did you would you like to comment on that question as well? Um, yeah, just to kind of lend to what Carmen was saying, I know we touched on it a little bit earlier, but I think personally one of our biggest resources is our weekly webinar. You know, Capacinto with the GRHC, we do it every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And this idea kind of came out of COVID. You know, we were thinking, how are we going to connect to our members? How are we going to keep our membership connected? And what we decided to do was do a weekly resource webinar. Um, it's evolved over time. I think we're about three months into it now. And we have a format where every week we try to bring on a local leader. We've had a few council members on. We've had some business owners. We try to bring, you know, highlight speaker that's really gonna gonna inspire the business community. Talk about their experiences, how they're overcoming, how they're adapting, and then we also make it a point to have a member spotlight every week too. So our members that might not be able to have that same uh, outreach right now, we can provide that for them and give them a way to reach out to the community, let them know that they're still here, they're still in business, and you know, kind of give them that that avenue to uh, or that channel to to reach even though right now they're not able to have their doors open. Um, so it's a really great resource for us. We're very excited to be able to do it. Um, and not only that, I mean, just like the businesses are pivoting, we, we pivoted too. So from a resource standpoint, that's kind of where this idea came from. That's great. All right, Edie, why don't you take the, the next question? All righty then. Uh, what economic trends should the Hispanic business community be looking for and considering the months ahead? Um, Joe, would you like to uh, take the lead on this one? As far as uh, economic trends um, for the Hispanic community, I think we spoke about it a little bit right now, and it's a, a shift in the industry and the way that you do business, um, shifting economically, using more of your marketing money to outreach on social platforms, on technology, investing in your business in that way so that you can continue doing business. Unfortunately, it's not just the Latino community, it's everybody, it's the nation, it's worldwide. And so economic trend, it's so hard to, even try to see moving forward because of COVID, everything has kept changing. Um, but as far as for just like the business owners, I think making sure that they use some of the resources that maybe for marketing they would have used um, instead of digital, they would have used a different platform, um, making sure that they prepare themselves so that they can reach to all of us that are at home or that we're doing Zoom or doing webinars and um, so that their business can flourish in the future as well yeah and, and honestly you know i think i think carmen carmen nailed it it's kind of it's it's difficult right now to really talk about about trends because everything is changing day to day you know what was true yesterday or the information that was out there yesterday is is different by the afternoon but i, I think carmen hit on a good point right there that right now is a really good time um for the re-education of how you run your business and allocating funds in a different way finding creative workarounds that maybe you're not dealing with the same kind of marketing budget advertising budget that you used to but there are resources out there and ways out there to to get around that you know um whether it's webinars whether it's you know the, the various the various avenues that are out there so i think that's a really good point that, that carmen hit on with that and finding a way to manage your business differently economically in preparation for that relaunch and for that reopening so that way your your business is healthy financially when that time comes great so one of the questions that i get asked pretty frequently uh, specifically from Riverside's residential community, is how we can support our business community right now. And I'm just curious, from you guys' perspective, are, are there things that Riverside's residential community can do to support businesses during this epidemic? Yes, definitely. Um, I think there's a few things that our residents can do. First and foremost is to actually shop with small business owners, making sure that we reach out to your community, drive around, uh, see if there's a local supermarket, um, whatnot, because I think that's really important right now. Okay, Joe, how about you? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, when it comes to support from the local community, I think, and you hear it a lot, but I think it's very true now more than ever, is shop local. Um, see what's out there, see what your local community has to offer. And I think one of the big things I'm hearing too when it comes to our membership and how important, how helpful this has been is word of mouth. You always hear word of mouth is one of the most powerful advertising things out there. And right now I think true more than ever. So if you have a great experience at a local restaurant or you know a local boutique, you know whatever that may be, be sure to tell your friends about it. Be sure to spread it around because those one, two, three extra customers a month might be a make or break for these small businesses right now. So I think it's a huge benefit to have that and to make sure that the local community is being involved and trying to help the small business stay alive during this time. Great. Okay, uh, so we got two more questions. Uh, I promised uh, Edie this would be quick and easy. So 
Edie, why don't you ask uh, <laughs> question number seven, and then I'll 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 do the last one, and we'll uh, that'll be the end of it for today. I really uh, cannot underscore how much we appreciate your guys' time and your availability to do this. So, all right, yeah, Edie, why don't you? you yeah, Edie, why don't you take question number seven? Did we miss anything? Is there any other key information for Hispanic business community that we may have missed? Uh, yes, I think right now with our Latino and Hispanic business owners, I think it's really important to use this time to be able to network and making sure they reach out to the organizations such as the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. There's other nonprofit organizations where we're constantly doing networking events. We're putting out resources out there. So I would encourage all of our business owners, not just the Latino community, to make sure that take advantage of the webinars that are going on right now, the virtual networking events, uh, because I think that maybe I know someone that can use a plumber and I met someone through networking. Whatever it may be, it's just expanding and not being afraid to get out there. Um, as well as not being afraid to ask for help and just educating oneself because this process has been hard for everybody. Even with the PPP loan, with any grants, um, I think we've all learned the process together. So make sure that you use those resources and um, educate yourself because I think that's important right now in this time. All of us have learned. I know I learned how to you know, do Zoom and do all these virtual ways of meeting people. Um, and reach out to us if there is anything that we can do or any resources that you're lacking as well. Joe, did you want to chime in on this one as well? Um, yeah, you know, I, I agree with the points Karma was making. You know, at, at the end of the day, business is just that. It's relationships and networking. And now is a time where we have um, the time and the rebuilding phase on our hands to be able to build those new relationships, build new networks. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there. I, I, me personally, I think there's more free information out there, more free resources available now than ever. You know, COVID hit everybody very hard, but it's also created some opportunities for change and for growth. And right now in this time of uh, when we're in this kind of holding pattern, waiting to see what's going to happen, you know, use that time to reevaluate your business, reevaluate yourself and kind of reinvent and find new ways to come out of this better and stronger, not only as a business owner, but as an individual as well. And, you know, that's what we're here for as the chamber. We want to make sure that we're that resource and that we're that hub that kind of connects these networks together. Um, some small business owners might not have as big of a reach or as big of a network, so we want to be that that in between that connects them to the people that they need to take their business to the next level. Well, great, uh, Joe and Carmen. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know I've learned a lot today, and I hope our viewers do as well. Uh, I'm curious. Can you tell uh, our viewers how they can get a hold of you? Can you give us your website? You guys have shared some amazing resources, and I know we just kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do folks that are interested in tapping into your network and your resources, how do they get a hold of you? What's your website? So you can um, get a hold of us at www.grhcc.com. We're also on Facebook, and we also have an Instagram. Um, we're very active as far as our social media goes. And then if you have any questions, you can always email our executive director, Joe, directly at jramos at grhcc.com. All right, that was uh, quick and easy. Thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, and uh, maybe in the future we can do it again. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much for having us on. We really appreciate it and everything that the city of Riverside is doing to outreach to our small business community and our community in general. All right, guys. Well, uh, that's it. Quick Thank and easy. I uh, appreciate your time and we'll be talking to you soon. Okay.